Greetings, today is Wednesday, August 6, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I'd like to talk about tropical activity. First, we'll discuss Tropical Storm Dexter, and we'll also talk about several areas we'll be monitoring over the next few days where there is a possibility of tropical development. But before that, I wanted to mention that today the University of Colorado released its updated forecast for this year's hurricane activity. Compared to their July forecast, they have maintained their expectations for the formation of 16 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. That means the University of Colorado continues to forecast that this Atlantic hurricane season will be slightly more active than normal. They also published their two-week forecast, which they released during the peak of the season and will continue doing so through October. In their forecast for the next two weeks, the University of Colorado anticipates that the Atlantic could be slightly more active than normal for the second and third weeks of August. This aligns with what we've been discussing in recent days. Looking at the visible satellite image, we can see Tropical Storm Dexter, which will begin to weaken as it moves toward the east-northeast. As you probably know, it poses no threat to land. We are also watching a strong tropical wave that has a medium chance of tropical development over the next seven days as it moves west-northwest. It is expected to pass far from the Caribbean, so at this time, it does not appear to pose a threat to land. Starting next week, we'll be monitoring new tropical waves emerging from Africa, as atmospheric conditions in the main development region will become more favorable due to a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which promotes instability and rising air over the Indian Ocean and Africa. During this phase, conditions in the main development region could lead to increased tropical activity. At the moment, aside from Tropical Storm Dexter, we don't have any other tropical cyclones. However, we're monitoring the tropical wave that will move away from the Caribbean and also the intertropical convergence zone, which could remain active as it moves over the southern Lesser Antilles in the coming days. While it may bring heavy rain to this region, it has not yet been marked with any chances for tropical development. Even so, some members of the American Model Ensemble keep the system active as it crosses the Caribbean Sea. However, very few members indicate any tropical development. Also note that today, in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico and just east of North Carolina, there has been a decrease in model members forecasting possible tropical cyclone development, so the chances for development in these areas over the next five days have decreased. In this image, we can also see that members of the American model have now aligned with the European model, showing a track well north of the first tropical wave we're monitoring. And finally, looking at the longer term, around seven days, some model members show potential development of a tropical cyclone in the tropical Atlantic. However, this is a long-range forecast, and much can change. At the moment, it's impossible to determine if it will be of interest to the Caribbean. Meanwhile, some members of the European Model Ensemble also highlight the disturbance east of the Lesser Antilles, but only about 10 to 15 percent show any development. Keep in mind that the National Hurricane Center has not marked this area with potential for development yet. Additionally, the European Model Ensemble has also decreased the chances of development near the southeastern U.S., and remains consistent that the tropical wave with medium development potential should stay away from land. Also note that in about six to seven days, it highlights the next tropical wave we'll be monitoring, as it could take a more westerly track. The important thing is that at the moment, the only areas being monitored by the National Hurricane Center include the tropical wave that will remain far from the Caribbean, and a low-pressure area located southeast of the United States, which now has lower development chances, only 30% over the next seven days, as it moves over open Atlantic waters. So this image makes it clear that there is currently no tropical threat to any part of the United States, the Caribbean, Central America, or Mexico. As we've mentioned in recent weeks, the main development region could see more favorable conditions compared to June and July. In fact, NOAA's Climate Prediction Center released its tropical outlook yesterday for the period of August 13 to 19, and has highlighted an area just east of the Caribbean with over a 40% chance of tropical cyclone development. However, remember this is just a guide, it does not currently mean there is a threat to the Caribbean. It simply identifies this as an area to monitor during the second and third weeks of August. Let's take a look at what the global models are showing. We'll begin with the American model. Here we have the tropical wave with a 60% chance of development. Unlike in previous days, the model now shows a west-northwest track that stays away from the Caribbean in agreement with the European model. Remember, in past runs, the American model showed a more westerly path, so it's definitely good news to see that its trend is now aligning with other models. This is why we don't need to be concerned about this first tropical wave. By the middle or end of next week, we'll be monitoring the next tropical wave. In the latest run, the American model develops it into a storm or hurricane. But keep in mind, we don't yet know where it will go, because anything beyond seven days is impossible to pinpoint in terms of track and intensity. 
the German model has the first tropical wave moving northward, keeping it in line with the consensus, and also begins to develop a low pressure area by mid next week between the Caribbean and Africa. We see the same thing in the UK model, with the first wave moving northward over open Atlantic waters, and potential development of a tropical depression to the west of the Cape Verde Islands. So in summary, we can say that this first tropical wave should not pose a threat to land, and is expected to stay over the central and northern Atlantic. Next week, we'll be monitoring the next tropical wave to see if it develops and to analyze its possible path. So for now, we can all remain calm, just stay attentive to the National Hurricane Center's tropical outlooks. As we've said, we'll likely see the formation of a few cyclones over the next two weeks. This is normal, since the peak of hurricane season begins on August 15th. Here on Hurricane Info, I'll continue monitoring the situation and keeping you informed. Before I go, I'd like to ask you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button, and click the bell to get notified when I upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent night. I'll see you tomorrow.